So what are the considerations if a power generation organization is thinking about on-site oil analysis? Um, why should it be considered? Well, oil analysis is a well-established technique for condition monitoring for power generation. Any power plant or organization that wants to maintain 98% or better uptime nowadays is employing condition monitoring strategies and of that, oil analysis is a well-established and well-documented uh, well uh, tool to achieve that. Um, power plants are in a very unique position. In addition to having complex equipment that is critical to the operation of the site, there is a big demand for immediate results, usually because there's a time base on outages uh, to have information quickly. However, they're quite complex. There's a lot of different assets that we'll talk about, but there's a lot of complex test packages that are based on the components. There's a lot of established industry norms um, to support the reason for oil analysis. Both the EPRI, Electrical Power Research Institute, ASTM, the Manufacturer OEM Guides, oil companies all promote and recommend oil analysis to be performed on a regular basis. But there's an advantage to having it on site uh, because usually personnel that are on site are well qualified, they know the equipment quite well, they understand lubrication very well and so they're able to react very quickly when they identify a problem. They can also interpret the data from the devices at site and usually have a synergistic effect. So once they have the information um, they know the metallurgy, they know the lubricants they're working with, and usually the information that's provided in terms of maintenance decisions is far more powerful from an on-site solution than it is from an off-site solution because of the uh, inclusion of the uh, technicians and the reliability people. And of course, speed, accuracy, and the, of the, and the data is of great value. So let's just talk a little bit about what these types of industrial power plants are involved with. Well, any utility or power organization today is usually not just one power plant. It can actually have a network of power plants. So it's not uncommon for a large utility nowadays to have maybe multiple assets providing power in different regions of their, uh, in, uh, their customer base or, or, or geographical location. And it can have multiple different types of fuel source. You might have a, a, a coal-fired large power plant. You might have a gas turbine or a series of gas turbines uh, that are as part of a, a combined cycle. Um, you can have maybe wind power assets. You may still have hydroelectric based assets. And you might also have distributed generation in the form of recips uh, that could be operated as diesel or waste gas in, um, in for, for waste disposal or dumps. Um, or backup, emergency backup on propane. A general rule of thumb is that the plant output, if somebody was considering how many, how big an oil analysis program should be for an on-site application, a good rule of thumb is look at the output. So the output on a typical plant, it could be any one of these sites. If the site is between 150 to 500 megawatts of output, Generally speaking, they would be producing between 200 to 1,000 samples annually. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about all the assets that are related to that. Whereas if you're talking about a very large site, could be coal or nuclear fired, you could be seeing up to 3,000 samples being generated per year. So more than enough to be able to generate, um, uh, to have an on-site uh, uh, solution that can be return of investment. Um, for sites that have a variety of smaller, less than 150 megawatts, but are distributed in a lot of different areas, they may be served by a central lab. And it's not uncommon to have a hybrid solution where you have a central lab with traditional lab equipment and then individual locations having their own on-site solution. So how is it that these uh, in, uh, power plants can generate that amount of samples based on a, uh, a megawatt size? Well, one way to be able to estimate and understand how many samples are present is to look at a typical generating unit and the associated components and auxiliary equipment that's necessary to generate power. Um, if we take a typical generating unit, don't matter about the megawatt size, if the main driver is one turbine, it could be a steam turbine or a gas turbine, um, the, let's look at it from this level. There will be one major turbine, 
The key oil tests of interest there would be water, something for particle count, oxidation, acid number, varnish, uh, wear, elemental wear is of interest. You'll also have an EHC or electrohydraulic control system that can be uh, of a different type of fluid, tacit number, water, particle count is of interest. And then on any one generating set, in addition to these singles, you can have up to two boiler feed pumps, you can have three to six condensate pumps, three to six feed water booster pumps, three to six circulating water pumps, two to four induced draft fans and forced draft fans, both the motors and the gearboxes. All of those need to be looking at water, viscosity, ferrous debris, elemental wear and particle count. Um, in addition to that, you can have gas recirculating fans, which are concerned about water, viscosity and particle count. You can have, depending on the application, eight to 10 cooling tower fan gearboxes. Um, you may have the motors on those as well. You're concerned about water, viscosity, wear, and ferrous density. You may have many, many smaller pieces of equipment, which we call balance of plant. These can be subcompressors, fans, motors, small systems, and all of these need to be watched for condition monitoring. And then you can have one to two emergency diesel backup gen sets just to support the turbine in the event of a trip. And they need to be watched for, uh, for a, a routine check, including, of course, the engine oil monitor. So on any one generating unit, this is the amount of assets. So you can imagine the amount of samples that are generated that can be done on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly, depending on the cycle and the severity. Um, and you can see that there's a variety of different tests. So, it's, so power plants are quite complex in this particular area. So when you're considering on-site applications, in addition to the type of tests that are used, also consider the different types of volumes in terms of, of when they occur. Um, sample volume tends to be lumpy in power plants. What does that mean? It means that one day you can have maybe four samples, the next day you could have 40 samples. It all depends on the routes and the sampling frequency and availability. So having a on-site solution that can accommodate that lumpiness is very important. Fluid types vary a lot. You can have both mineral, synthetic fluids, you can have polyglycol, polyester fluids, different types of fluids that don't all mix with mineral oil, so you have to consider that. In addition to that, your FRF or fire-resistant fluids can be phosphate ester style systems for your EHC, also on some of the other hot sections. Um, that sometimes a great example is Farquil is a worldwide system that's often used, but there's many other companies that produce um, um, phosphate ester or that style of system. Um, and you have to be aware of the compatibility with seals on anything you do. And certainly on the on-site solution, you need to make sure that you have the processes in place to, to test those and not to have them mixed up with your mineral oils. So if you're considering some on-site solutions for power generation, what we recommend is to investigate, uh, for the most part, the Minilab suite of solutions. And if we can uh, just give you an example, um, if you had something like a coal nuclear plant where you have a lot of assets that are similar to what we talked about earlier, you might want to consider a Minilab 153 because it can handle all those assets. Um, same thing goes with uh, if you have a gas turbine plant or a combined cycle gas turbine plant, consider a Minilab 53 or a 153. If you have a hydroelectric facility, a Minilab 53 is a great adequate tool for on-site there. If you are working with wind turbine assets, you might want to consider the Minilab 33, which are the portable combo kits that you can take out to the actual uh, location and run your samples straight away there. They only take a small volume of fluid and you can actually operate them right there and then. And of course, for engine applications, if you are in a situation where you have a distributed generation where engines are all over the place you might want to consider either the uh, Minilab EL123 system or the Microlab 40 system to support that if you have to um, that can be managed in a central location or if you want to go out to a to a to a uh, individual site you may want to consider the combo kits to support that